Welcome back to InfoGamer. Today I have another Photon lesson to add to our tutorial series on how to create a multiplayer game in Unity. Now this lesson is just going to be another conceptual run through and this time it will be on RPC functions. And the reason why I'm creating this lesson is because it's super important that you understand the principles behind RPC functions and how to use them. Because if you can understand the principles that I'll teach you in this lesson, then you can take RPC functions and you can really apply them to any scenario within your multiplayer game. Now before we begin, make sure that you subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you can get updates when we publish new videos. Alright, so here we have the same multiplayer architecture that we talked about in the last concept video. And here we have a simple script that I've created. Now this presentation will show two different versions of the RPC function and I want you to pay attention to the difference between the two. But before we do that, let's talk about the different steps to creating and calling an RPC function. The first thing that you'll need is a photon view. So here I have a private photon view variable which I've called PV. And the photon view class belongs to the photon.pun namespace. So you want to make sure that you call using photon.pun up at the top of your script. Within the script we also initialize our PV variable within the start function by calling PV equals get component and we pass in the class name photon view. This will get the photon view script or component from the object that this script is attached to. The next step is to create the actual RPC function and an RPC function looks like any other function. The only difference is that it has this PUN RPC tag out in front of it. After this tag, you then need to specify the return type, and for an RPC, you don't need any other return type other than void. You then need to give your function a name, and in this case, I've called mine RPC underscore function. Now, in the Photon plugin, it's actually not required to have RPC as part of your function. It's just something that I do out of habit to better keep track of which functions are RPCs and which functions are not. Within this function, we are just printing to the console our sync variable, which is of type int. The next step is to call your RPC function. And most of the time, you only want to call an RPC function from an object owned by the local player. And so here I've included this if statement where I check to see if pv.isMine is true. And this checks to see if the current object or the current photon view is owned by the local player. Now to call your RPC function, you first need to access a photon view. So here I have my PV variable, and then you want to call the RPC function. So I say dot RPC, and then within parentheses, we pass in some parameters. The first parameter is the name of your RPC function within quotes. The second parameter is the target in which you want the RPC function to be sent to. And to specify a target, you first type RPC target, and then within this enum, there's a number of different options. And here I've just typed all buffered. But let's go and have a look at the different options available. All right, so here we have some of the documentation for the Photon 2 plugin. And here you can see we have the enum, which is called RPC target. And within this enum, we have all these different options. The first option, which is called all, will send out the RPC to everyone else except for the local client. The local client will instead just execute the RPC function directly. And players who join the game later will not be able to execute this RPC unless you send it again. The others option will send the RPC out to everyone else, but the local client will not execute the RPC, and the same thing goes with players that join the game later. The master client option will only send the RPC to the client who is hosting the game. The all buffered option is similar to the all option, but the main difference is that with the all buffered option, new players that join the game later will be able to backtrack and receive that RPC function that was sent previously. The others buffered option is similar to the others option, but has the ability for new players to receive old RPCs just as the all buffered option. The all via server option will send the RPC to everyone, including the local client, and it will do this by way of the server or the host client. And finally, we have the all buffered server option, which is the same as the all via server option, but it also allows players who join the game later to receive this RPC function. 
So coming back to calling your RPC function, the first parameter is the name of your RPC function. The second parameter is the target or who you want the RPC function to be sent to. And then every parameter after that are the parameters that you want to be sent across the network. And the parameters that you have after your RPC target need to match the parameters that you have within your RPC function. All right, so now that we've talked about creating and calling RPC functions, Let's have a look at how an RPC function is sent and executed across the network. And so I've created this diagram which depicts the connections of a multiplayer game. And so we have three different devices which are running three different instances of the same game. We have one instance of our game which is running as host and the other two which are connected to the host as clients. Now let's say there's a game object that exists in each instance of our game and that game object is synchronized across the clients via a photon view. And finally, let's say that our sync variable of our top right client equals 100, but that the sync variable on all the other clients is set to zero. So now that we have our scenario set up, let's run through this script step by step. Now remember, we're gonna run through this scenario twice, first with this script and then with a slightly modified script and I want you to pay attention to the different outcomes. Now the first thing that will happen is our start function will execute on each of our clients and that's because this game object that we're talking about exists across the network. And so the first line within our start function is where we initialize our PV variable and we do this by getting the photon view component. The next thing that we do is we check to see if the photon view belongs to the local player. And this is very important because this will stop the rest of our start function from executing on the other clients. But if we are the local player, then we will call our RPC function and we'll send it out to all players. And all of that will look something like this. So first we call our RPC function on the local client. Then the RPC is sent out to all the players. Then they execute their RPC function. And within our RPC function, all we're doing is printing our sync variable to the console. And so here you can see the difference between the clients. And so our local player will debug 100 because their sync variable is set to 100. But since our sync variable on all the other clients is set to zero, each of them will debug zero. Now let's have a look at this modified script. So it's the same scenario, but we've changed our script a little bit. The first change that you'll notice is that we've added a parameter to our RPC function, which is of type int, and it's called sync in. And the value that we're passing into our RPC function is the sync variable. Then within our RPC function, we're setting our sync variable equal to sync in. So now let's look at how that will all play out. So the first thing that we do is we call our RPC function, but we're passing in the value of 100. We then send our RPC function out to all other players. We then execute our RPC function on all the clients, including the local player. The sync variable on all our clients is then set to the value of our sync in parameter, which is 100. And finally, we debugged the console the value of our sync variable. Now I wanted you to notice the difference in outcome between our two scripts. Our first example had our local client debug 100 to the console, but all the other clients debugged zero. This is because the only thing that we were synchronizing with our RPC function was the actual command to debug our sync variable to the console. In the output of our second example, we're debugging 100 across all clients. This is because we're passing the value of 100 across the network as a parameter in our RPC function. We are then setting our sync variable equal to that value, and then we are debugging that value to the console. And so in this case, we're synchronizing not only our command to debug to the console, but our variable as well. And so there you have the basic concepts of RPC functions in a little more depth than I covered in my last video. Now that's everything that we're going to learn about in this video, and now you should have a better understanding of RPC functions and how they work. And you should be able to take the concepts that we learned about in this video and really apply them to any multiplayer mechanic within your games. 
If you liked this video and you found it to be helpful, make sure that you give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Also subscribe to our channel so you can be up to date on all our latest videos. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.